Hello everybody, welcome to the 2020 Southern Nationals. This is round three action. We've got front nine coming to you from this beautiful Cinco Lagos Park here in Spalding County. Ace Run Productions coming to you here. I am Felix. And I am Conrad. Conrad, tell us what we can expect to see here on this beautiful property. All right, so this course is a temp course that is set up. Uh, we did get the word during the tournament that it will become a permanent course. So this is something to look forward to. Uh, but it does go around these five lakes. I think that's what that uh, single logger means. That is correct. So uh, this is a very uh, picturesque course. Uh, water's going to come into play on a lot of holes. Uh, and we'll just see how the uh, pros handle it. We have the uh, card after Dundee. After the second round here, we have Jamie up top. We have Matthew, Andrew, and Isaac all on the lead card here for this for this round. Yeah, this is going to be the final 18 before the field gets cut down for the final nine to determine the actual champion of the 2020 Southern Nationals. And I can tell you that everyone is putting in a very good bid because with this comes the pass to the USDGC. It is a qualifier. Absolutely. Hole one is a par three starting out at 365 feet. Now this is a daunting starting hole just because you have that wood over there on the right. Uh, it very much in play. Uh, but it is a manageable distance for the pros. We got Jamie stepping up here first. We see that this whole average is right at par. That uh, this initial gap, pretty friendly, but then it, it tightens up as you get closer to the uh, actual pin. That big tree he's challenging comes into play early. Yeah, he hits the tree and luckily he falls inbounds. Typically, if you hit those trees, you're straight in the water. Uh, the thing about this, the teeing off, is you really have to just trust your disc that you need to get it to turn uh, around those trees before it comes into the green area. Yeah, it's a little bit um, of an optical illusion, so to say. You, you can kind of see the basket, but you kind of can't. So, you really, like you're saying, you really have to trust your line. Yeah. Medio, that was a great shot there, just going above those trees just slightly and then parking it. That's ideal there. That's There you go, trusting your disc and trusting your line. Yeah. Oh, inside line. I never even dreamed this up when I played the flex start here. Did not see that as an option, but uh, Andrew is obviously bringing out the fireworks here. He's got a look. He has a look, yeah. Typically, you would just bail out over there on the left side, but he actually uh, did a great job of controlling that and keeping it inside circle two. This looks wide enough, hopefully, to get past it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's well past it. That's a damn near ace run. Wow. Yeah. Nicely done there. If you by know Ezra, Ezra, you know he's not laying up anything. I don't think he understands those two words together. <laughs> Jamie here trying to get a little bit of a better footing where he is. I'm really surprised, honestly, that he, like you said, stayed in bounds when, yeah. when he clipped that tree. There's a lot of other cars that if you hit the tree, you were just in the water just automatically. Full commitment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he gave it a good bid. Very nice. What are we trying to save that to? Yeah. Andrew probably, what, circle, circle's, circle's edge? edge? Yeah. Just outside, looks like he's stepping through. Ooh. Oh, left side chains. A bit. And Nadia with his very distinctive putt. Absolutely. <laughs> Making short work of that, like you said, daunting opening hole. And showing why he's the co-leader. I know the course designer was uh, saying that he would rather have this be in the middle section of uh, the course somehow and not just the, the opening hole, but you kind of you kind of take what you dealt when you're given a piece of property and you got to make it work. Yeah. Yeah, probably not the ideal way to start the day is with having to execute that high level of a shot to start. But yeah. Hey. When you're a pro, you can do stuff like that. There you go. Didn't work so much for me, but uh, I did play the course blind. Yeah. <laughs> All right, hole two, we've got a par three at 260 feet, but this uh, plays incredibly uphill. It is a deep climb up to get to this pin and then a hard left so ideally these guys are going to throw uh, something stable up top that's just going to kind of work its way over to the left but you've really got to get on like a high speed driver even though it's only 260 feet. No, several of us never even considered this high line that they're taking. 
Um, I'm just basically trying to play something over stable and get it to skip over there. And Matteo, there you go, taking over the top. Just having it crash. And it kind of just spikes in and stays there. Yeah. Right at the circle's edge, I believe, though. You want something stable, but at the same time, you kind of need that glide and you need gravity to kind of push it over left. So it's a, yeah. it's a fine line with the, the right disc to choose here. It's going a little lower. Yeah. With a little more glide. But then you run into that issue where if it's too much glide, it may yeah. stay straight for too long. See what Jamie's throwing here is an MVP disc. Jamie throws quite a bit of MVP disc. I think the majority of his bag at this point is kind of a MVP. Yep, nice and high as well. Slightly different line than the other two. That looks like it's got better action on it. Oh, oh. Right, that tree again. Wow. But that's probably... He came out on the good side of the tree. Yeah. He didn't say that much. Probably 30 feet in there. I think he's throwing a D1. Uh, it's a safe bet. Oh, oh it goes no. too low. And that's uh, knocked right down. Yeah. That's a pretty common mistake on this hole. Either You're either playing for a flare shot, like you said, or you're trying to get way over the top. Trying to throw a recovery and, in. Ooh, well. If it didn't hit that, that tree back there, it might have went in. Yeah. It almost rings up the uh, unlikely birdie there. Yeah. Oh, it didn't like that out of his hand. Yeah, he knew that was low. It's you're putting downhill though. It's a little can be a little tricky making that correction. Oh, Matty O, uncharacteristic miss there. That's my spot, Matty. There is a two. It's gonna take the only two on this hole, so yeah. that'll bring him back up to a, a tie for the lead once more with Matty O. And again, the course designer was talking about this hole, when it becomes permanent, it has the option of being something simple like this, a par three, all the way to a daunting par five. There's a lot of property that, uh, that he has to work with when it comes to making this a permanent course. Yeah, this is just on the other side of the Green Valley mm -hmm. disc golf course, which is also beautiful uh, and is also has a couple of holes where the water really comes into play. So there is a ton of real estate available to make something I mean, this course itself is beautiful, but they can do even more if they really wanted to. Yeah. I would love to see them integrate uh, starting and stopping point for both of the courses so that you can yeah. actually pay a, like a, a straight 36 hole loop. Yeah, that'd be nice. All right. We're coming up on hole three here. It's a par three and it's 475 feet. It really doesn't play that long because it's so much downhill. But you have that water right there to the right, uh, which is going to very much come in play with any drive that you, you throw trying to attack the pin. There's sometimes, it wasn't as windy here, thankfully, but there can be some wind. As you can see, the feather banners there on the bottom left. As you get down there, the wind is going to kind of change from top to bottom here. Jimmy goes over top, but that angle that he throws, yeah, this is that's basically the bailout zone. That's, yeah. That's conceding to a par. I don't want anything to do with the water or the basket. <laughs> you see the pros here kind of teeing off to the left of the tee pads. You had the option, uh, because of the footing and all that, and this being a temp course, to either tee off from the right or left of the actual tee pads. I thought Matty O was attacking him more so, uh, but it looks like he chose a slightly more overstable disc. I thought he was going kind of like straight at it. Now, as I expect to see, go straight at it. Oh, that came out a little early. Oh, that's, yeah, that's going to finish more left than he would have liked. Yeah, definitely. So three in a row over there in that area. He's actually higher up than the other two. I can remember at one point he was asking me if that was dry because if there is water over there, he didn't go that far left, but definitely not where he was planning on ending up. Hey, Mr. Oh. Montgomery, that's, that's, oh, trouble. that's too straight. That's yeah. definitely trouble. Oh, but it spits out. Yeah, it just wow. trickled down at the edge. Yeah. That's a yeah, lucky you think, break. You can, that's a lucky break because you could either get stuck in there and it's high hill to get out, or it could have went through and went to the water as well. Oh, that's fluffed. Yeah. Uh, luckily, it's... Uh, we all know that feeling. Yeah. But you can see he's a little disappointed with that. 
As we're here with a long look from the top of the hill here, that bailout zone we were talking about. A little bit. Yep. It's not going to lose any strokes uh, with a par here. Get in there. Ooh, good run by Maddie. He's got such a smooth, it's an unorthodox stroke, but it's so smooth. Yeah. Jamie Little Heiser Maybe. run. Yeah. Ooh, wow. Oh my gosh. <laughs> See if Andrew can uh, put himself back to even with the rest of the card here. Oh, oh man, a little low. Man. And these, these temporary baskets, they are shorter, shorter than you expect a basket to be on a permanent course. So that, that can kind of get in your head just a little bit because it is a little short. It's going to clean up the bogey there. Yeah. The rest of the car should tap in pars. Again, at 475 feet at a par three, it's such a tricky gap. It's such a tricky shot to execute. I don't think with a par, you're really kind of falling back to the field here. No, not really. I played the flex start. I had one player on my card who went over the top and challenged the water. He did, you know, end up in a circle one. So, I mean, there, that, that play is there. All right, we do a three-hole recap here. We say a little bit of green, a little bit of red, but mostly white. So, not a lot of movement between the players here. I'm Matthew Orham. Been playing the Southern National since 1999, but the Southern National started in 1996 by my father, Jim Orham. He started the Southern Nationals because honestly, in the PDGA history, you used to have to pay $5 for every person to play. And my dad never felt like you got the money's worth of what the $5 was for because it never went to a championship or no kind of thing. So my dad started his own organ organization called the Southern Nationals. It's nonprofit. No money goes to anything but the players. And he took $2 out of everybody's entry fee for every division. And all year long, when you play that division, the $2 of everybody that signed up in the division goes to the championship, which was the Southern National Championships this week. It's $3 now because of inflation, but it's still, and I like it because it's like Kevin says, McCoy, it's the players, it's the players championship. It's for the players, you know, and all the money goes back, and I think that's a really good thing that goes on. So the Southern Nationals started, um, PDJ was starting to have a big influence and starting to require uh, a lot more out of TDs and as far as uh, fees and whatnot. So the guys down south, mostly a lot of the players, were really kind of against a lot of the things that the PDJ was initiating at the time. Um, there's a misconception that Jim uh, started Southern Nationals to compete with the PDGA, but that really wasn't the case. He ran tournaments and many players just came to him voicing opinions, hey, we don't want our money sent to the PDGA. So Jim came up with the Southern Nationals. The, it's what the people wanted. Um, they're like, let's keep our money here. Let's play for our money. We don't need the PDGA to be involved in telling us how to do things. Um, so Jim never set this up to compete, get away from the PDJ. It's really just what everybody wanted. And he was the main guy running tournaments, putting courses in. So he kind of became the face and organized everything. Yeah, uh, Jim and Terry back in the day started Southern Nationals. They uh, thought that the uh, disc golf should be more about the players and they wanted to create a championship that uh, the money they raised went straight back to the players. And that's where Southern Nationals got their start I think it's about 20 years ago. Um, so they basically every event that Southern Nationals qualifier, they have a $3 uh, uh, player's fee and then two of it goes back to the tournament. So we ended up starting with uh, $8,000 out of cash just from Southern Nationals. And uh, they got a great organization going. And uh, man, we, we really were happy to be on board and supporting their uh, efforts. And hopefully we can do it again someday. So Southern Nationals itself has its organization. If you want to run a Southern Nationals qualifier, you go straight to the website sndg.org and it has an application form for you to run a qualifier. We're basically in a situation, we're not turning anybody around away unless it's um, you know, some, some other kind of bad situation. But if you want to run a regular tournament, a C-tier, two-round tournament, 
just hit up Southern Nationals, you can become a qualifier. If you want to run the championships, they have a bid process, and I think the bid process is just about to open up for next year. So um, go on to SNDG.org and read up about it. They have a lot of information through their Southern National Handbook that tells you all about it. All right, and here we have a look at hole four. This is a par three coming in at 350 feet. Pretty standard hyzer for these guys. The water on the left really shouldn't come into play unless you really kind of saw something off from the tee, but these guys are looking to just place a power hyzer somewhere near this basket and walk away with the birdie here. See the hole averaging 2.62, so slightly under par. Jamie looks like he's throwing that same disc he threw on hole one. MVP disc. He's taking a wide route. Ends up a little short. Maybe at the circle's edge. Have a little uphill look at it. Yeah. There's, there is some slope to the screen, but the grass here is high enough where you're not really in danger of skipping out of bounds. Maddie going a little wider. And, and well, a little perfect, I think, is that line that he took. Man. Yeah, that is... Somebody beat him with a CTP? I can't see what that flag is. Somebody actually put it closer than that? No, the, the, some of the flags are, are the, the actual basket position. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. It's throwing it out wide. A little bit of steam on that one. Yeah, a little high. Oh, he crashed up by those logs there. See if Andrew learned anything from watching them. A little lower, Ooh, a little more straight at like it, that. but it's fading left. That's yeah, going to be a tough look in that shul back there. Yeah. It's going up over the top. you giving it a bit. Whoa. That was closer than I thought he'd be able to. I didn't think he'd be able to get anything up over that stuff. And I guess that's the thing about Tim courses. When he, when you talk about the rough, it's really rough. Like there, you may be the first person to travel there. Yeah. Oh, Ooh, good bid there by Jamie. Tip gave, of the chains on the right. Give it a good hike, good speed. As we're here trying to clean up a two. Yes, sir. Yes. So as we're putting himself uh, within two strokes of the lead momentarily here, Maddie. Barring something catastrophic is going to take a birdie on this hole as well. Yeah. Mm, that was a little bit scary there. Yeah. But the basket did its job. Earned the bonus. Tap in for Mr. Montgomery. Yeah, walking away with a par there from where he ended up, I wouldn't be too upset with that. Yeah. And Matteo with an absolute laser line at this park to Absolutely. all right moving on to hole number five this is a par four coming in at 650 feet and the thing to talk about on this hole is this slope. I don't even understand how they cut the grass on that thing. That is a seriously steep incline uh, before you get up here to the basket, which is also on a very steep incline. Uh, yeah, it's kind of, it's, it's really about managing your landing zone off the drive and then, and then. <laughs> yeah, but the thing about, I mean, you, you're, you're forced to kind of land on the heels at some point, mm -hmm. but then your footing on the heel is going to be at such a weird angle. It's just... Matty going forehand, which is probably the typical place since you've got that angle to kind of contend yeah. with and just digs it into the side of that hill. And if you saw the disc just got swallowed up by the grass, the grass is quite high, so I mean, yeah. that will mess with your footing as well. I'll be interested to see if Ezra, he, since he goes backhand, if he's throwing something more flippy. Oh, yeah. That's turning. Oh, he smashed this. Oh, yeah. oh that wow. was so close to being so great. If he could just got past that and landed up in that flat right there. He could have had a legit jump put at it. <laughs> Where he is now isn't that bad um, since it did kick out for him just a little bit. Jamie, 
He's going He's wide right. Unconventional route. Well, oh, that needs to skip big. Skip, skip, skip. Oh, oh no. Did not. And he gets stopped by the curb. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You see he's out of bounds, so he'll be taking that pretty early back because he went so wide early on. He's only going to advance maybe 100 feet. Yeah. Well, the advantage that he, the only only advantage that he'll have from that is that he'll be up top where it's nice and flat. He'll be able to have, attack it at a, a slightly okay. different angle than everyone else will. It's a good shot there by Andrew. Again, throwing something more flippy to kind of fight the angle and gravity there. There's Jamie's third. you got to avoid that pole, too. And that looked a little thought off. Yeah, he went to the oh, left no. of where the actual pin is. And I don't know what's in there. Uh, fortunately, when I played, I didn't have to, to deal with that. But it doesn't look friendly. Yeah, I'm sure it's trouble. Like I said, anytime you're in a rough here, you are likely the first person or first of just a few to go in there. You're an explorer at that point. It's, it's pretty <laughs> exciting and adventurous to be in there. <laughs> it's a good shot there by Matteo to put himself in position. A four is nothing to scoff at at this hole. I know you look at 650 and you think pros will be able to lace this and, and get a three. But with these angles, it is, this is by no means a, a gimme. Yeah, this is not a simple simple hole. Andrew, not too far from where Matty O was. Didn't look thrilled with the result. That's what getting this. Oh, wow. wow. Well, there you go. That's how you get a three on this hole. Just throw 450 off the tee. <laughs> And then a putter up shot. Yeah. You can see Jamie is deep in there. He's trying oh. to figure out what distance to throw to even get out. Jamie's in there? Yeah. I thought she was just shooting a picture of uh, of scenery there. That was just B-roll. <laughs> There's this caddy coming out. Up over the top. Wow. Oh, that needs to check? Okay. Well, it should stay on the hill. Yeah. As tall as the grass is. With the slope on there. If the, if the if the grass wasn't as high as it is. Yeah, that would have went back down <laughs> yeah. for sure. And look at this angle. This just gives you a look at how steep this is. The camera doesn't even do it justice. <laughs> oh, he's throwing at least wow. 300 feet in the air. <laughs> <laughs> he's shooting hoops. At, they're shooting hoops at this point. Yeah. They're not even... Oh. Ooh, kicked, but it's sat down. Yeah. yeah, he's worried about the roll, but it, he checked yeah. up. If you look in the background, that right there is um, Green Valley. Oh. oh. And again, the grass kind of saves the day. Yeah, that's the part, one of the par fives in the background there for uh, Green Valley. It plays along the water the entire way. So that's how you get a bird. Really great birdie, great drive. Yeah. Executed the second shot perfectly with a stress-free drop-in on, on this hole. You, you can't ask for anything better than that. It's hard for them even to get up this hill, and Maddie's dragging a cart up this thing. Dropping in his par. All right, hole six. Another challenging par three, downhill, 400 feet. You've got a little bit of a tight landing zone to navigate here to get your birdie look. Wide right's gonna get you in trouble in that thick stuff. Wide left is gonna get you in trouble in that thick stuff. So ideally, just stay in the middle. Yeah. By the way, there's a headwind on this hole. Hole is averaging 2.78 for the MPOs this day. As we're ripping on one of his mids here, I believe, probably an M3. And that is a great shot. Yeah, at first look, it looked like he, he let it go too left, but he knows his disc and knew that was gonna knew that was going to move slightly to the right. Matty throwing something higher speed, but he's going on the spike play, it looks like, just on yeah, the wide right. Yeah, trying to go over that tree and come in. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. That'll work. Yeah, that'll work. I know when I played the whole doing the flex start, I threw a infinite disc Inca P blend. Yeah. So the mid range, like their rock three. Yeah. The slightly understable one. Oh, this is trouble. Oh, stay this. dry. Stay dry. I didn't even think of the water coming out. Yeah, you're right. And from the tee box, you probably wouldn't even think that the water is yeah. like right there.
Jamie going wide right also, it looks like. Yeah. Looking to crash in. And he does. Well, yeah, he got he nicked the top of the trees, but he happened to fall down on the that's right good. side, so that's good. Andrew did stay dry. He has somewhat of a look at it, a window. Ooh, oh, sit down. Okay. Okay. <laughs> that just would have been insult to injury to go back in there again. Jamie here with a legit look at it after clipping the uh, top of that tree. Good That's hit. Right, no doubt the whole way that was going in. You wouldn't think that this would be uh, one that you could lose strokes on, but yeah, if the whole the whole average was 2.7, you're trying to get a birdie on this for sure. Oh, yeah. Ezra, nicely done. Just left of center. So Ezra trying his best here to keep up with Maddie. Yep. Jamie's falling off a little bit off the uh, off the pace. He's now in third place behind Ezra as we finish up hole six here. Yeah. And Maddie keeps trucking along. 21 down so far. All right, three hole recap. Uh, we see that Andrew just went par, par, par. Is birdie, birdie, birdie trying to make moves on Maddie O that had the uh, two birds there. Hole seven is a par four, 525 feet. And don't let that distance fool you. No one is driving this green. <laughs> the turn that you have to, to implement to get to the green and the danger on the green, it just doesn't make it a smart play. So we'll see these players uh, probably go out over the road a little bit and then come back in. Uh, ideally, you don't want to land on the hill for your approach shot. There is a flat area just beyond it that uh, it's a little bit more ideal for approaching there is some ob like if you throw a two straight here you can possibly find ob long oh yeah uh, but you've got to really up. pump it to get it out there though. yeah that's pretty ideal right there that is ideal at. yeah and i at first i didn't think he was going to make the, the the turn from the angle that he threw but uh, i guess i was thinking of my distance and not his distance yeah <laughs> Maddie going with a straight shot at it, kind of playing the hillside there to give him a little kick, and it does. He'll have a little bit of a tricky side hill footing issue, but... Yeah, I think he probably wanted to go just a little bit further than he went, but he kind of threw it low. Let's see what Jamie does here. Jamie putting it out nice wider. Wide. Oh, well, that's uh, stable, whatever that is. Yeah, and that's the, the problem with going that wide is that you're, you're coming back into the hill instead of going past it. And I'm not sure if Andrew was upset with that throw or not. He walked away immediately. I don't think he it was exactly what he was looking for, but it's not terrible. It's going to give him a slightly blind look at the at the green. He might be able to see the top of the basket, but that's about it. But now he's got to almost go pure hyzer, like a power shot here, like that, and and yeah. trust the the angle that it comes in on. Ooh, that, that is a great shot. Really well executed, yes. especially from what we were saying. He may not have even been able to see his target. And just the the trouble that is just I mean twenty feet past the basket, you're you're in trouble. Yeah. I would see most people doing this, which is laying up to the front of the hill, just in front of the basket. Just to have some reassurance that uh, you're not going to skip or slide into the in the crap. Because that is a, a kind of a, a road that goes back there, so you don't know how it's going to react off of that. Oh, oh. Jamie had a little footing issue there coming off of that, but... Oh, oh there's... Ooh. Oh, that needs to sit down. It's in there. Okay. And it's not that he's so far back. It's just it's there's going to be so much stuff in your way. Yeah. You're not going to have a window. And as with a jump putt at this, that's how far his tee shot went. Beautifully done. Just needs and to... The... Oh, come on. Okay. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Almost got punished for a good shot. All right. Jamie doesn't look like he's too bad. I thought he would have been inward. The yeah, branches would have been obstructing him. Yeah, I thought he would have been behind stuff. Oh, 
Oh, just great low. bid. Yeah. There's a great putt there. The, yeah, the bird. Good birdie. Even though the, the tee shot, he was the shortest of the group, that second shot yeah. was just remarkable to put him in position. Maddie from underneath the basket. Yeah. Getting it done. Maddie is cool as ice with them glasses always on. <laughs> always styling out there on the course. Surprised he's not wearing that, uh, that hat we always see him in. Yeah, the fedora. Tapping in for his bird. Keeping pace with Matty O. Yeah. All right, hole eight. Uh, to me, one of the most picturesque holes out here. Par three coming in at 375 feet. Again, a pretty standard hyzer. There is some trouble on the left, some on the right, but ideally you want to kind of have that tree as your focal point and know that if you're past that tree by 20, 30 feet, you've done your job on this one. The initial water carrier should not be an issue for any of these guys. Yeah. As gets it to flip up. Looks like the same disc he threw on the previous hole. And parkage. All right. Go. Inside of 20, that is ideal. Matty O watching that knows what he has to do now. Again, just a little bit of wind here, a slight headwind as you can see from their, their shirts, really kind of giving you an indication. Maddie going wider. And he's deciding to throw from the, the temporary, the AstroTurf. And, oh, didn't get any skip there at all. Yeah. That's a tough look coming down that hill because then your speed control really comes into, uh, into play there. I wonder why they're deciding to go off of that instead of the ground. Um, Might be the angle. Yeah. Oh, that's oh, turning. That's too much. And there's that wind kind of playing, wreaking havoc on his disc. Yeah, it didn't have a chance of coming back. Jamie here. Let's see if he can get it back on track here. He's uh, he slipped off the pace a bit. Just throwing this watermelon disc again. This looks pretty good. Just gets past that tree. Ooh, oh. or clips it. Yeah. We'll still have a look there. It's, uh, <clears throat> thankfully, he's off of it. Off of it and didn't didn't kick anywhere else. I mean, he could easily hit the tree and went to the water. So, very fortunate to be on that side of the tree and dry looking at it. Uh, Mr. Montgomery. He left that out. Ooh, he left wow. it out a little bit. He left that out a lot more than he wanted to. Yeah. Matty. Oh, he was going for it. He was. See the disappointment there. <laughs> Jamie checking the wind a little closer up to the actual basket there. Veteran yeah. move. So I'm moving a little bit left to right for him. Don't know if that's a headwind or a tailwind, but. So he's going to step through on this one. Oh, oh had the yeah. line, but just left it a little bit low. Yeah. I wonder if you thought that was a headwind that was going to lift it. Oh, uh, good nice putt. Good, great recovery there after an upshot that I, I'm sure he wished he would have put a lot closer. I mean, yeah, those were two shots that he wished yeah. he could have had back, but he still was able to salvage out a par. As with another stress-free birdie. Yeah. The soul birdie for this, so he's going to gain a stroke. He is getting to within a stroke here. All right, hole nine. Another shorty, part three at 280 feet, but not at all a gimme whatsoever. Um, the idea behind the hole is basically a forehand, but this, just the window that you have to hit to get a forehand that's going to go there is just so daunting, especially with the wind that's constantly coming off the lake. As we're here, primarily a backhand player, 
And, and that one skips, hit the ground, it, but... Yeah, touched on the other side there of that little peninsula sticking out, but he is out of bounds. And matteo has got an opening here to put a little bit more distance between him and Ezra. Tries to find the line. That's stable, wherever yeah, it is. Yeah, and it went high, and it looked like it got knocked down. Yeah, he's just in that, that stuff up there. This um the, the the pros weren't a fan of this particular hole. They felt like there was too much luck involved with the actual forehand. There is a a, a really tight hyzer line. I don't know if any of these guys are gonna take it though. That is high up and gets yep, knocked down as well. Too. Hopefully it's sad. Yeah. And like forehand is the only play that actually like makes sense. There is no backhand turnover, especially with the wind and no. how far out you got to put it. Oh, Jamie, Stitt. that's trouble. Oh, oh. no way! <laughs> <laughs> and that's how you draw it up. <laughs> Off the water skip, nicely done. I'm sure that was 100% intentional. And he's probably closer to the to the basket right now. Yeah. All right. Andrew just out throws the green just a little bit, but he's safe. <laughs> They brought in one of the uh, co-designers yeah. here um, just to kind of talk about what the play would be here. And I think they, they made the ultimate call that he was, that he touched on that side and could play it from that little peninsula area there versus having to take it way back to where he first went out of bounds. Yeah. With a long, ooh, long, long bit. Look. Wow. wow. I thought it was just like laying up to he, the. Oh, he's trying to take two strokes there on Ezra. <laughs> oh, we see the gap that Jamie has to hit here. Ooh, oh. a little turnover bid. Yep. Andrew coming back uphill at it slightly. Oh, man, again. Yeah. That's, that's got to be frustrating. He's had a couple of those now. Yeah. And Ezra's got to go down to a knee here with a, a bit of a low ceiling, but this also kind of keeps the basket at the same height that you're kind of normally used to putting at. Yeah. Boy, yeah. that's a good recovery from where he was to get a bogey on that hole. So again, we're seeing a whole nine to 280 feet. <laughs> Definitely not a gimme. It's, yeah. it's uh, rearing its teeth here for sure. Par is going to be the, uh, the score to get if you want to take strokes on people. And there it is as we wrap up these nine holes. We see that Jamie's dropped to 18, uh, Matteo's at negative 22, Andrew's at 15, and Ez is making that push at 20 under. So we see the, t the scores at the turn here. Ezra Dave Felberg making a push off of the second card as well as Isaac Robinson, so that's going to be something to keep an eye on to see how we finish out these last nine holes and see who's going to make it to the final nine. Oh, yeah. Big shout out to Innova Disc Golf for all the work they did, helping to get this course put together. Great job by the tournament director, Kevin McCoy. Thanks so much for checking out the Front Nine Action. Back Nine is coming your way next here on Ace Run Productions.